Israel's military said there were at least 30 rockets fired from Lebanon into Israel on Wednesday. They killed at least one person and injured two in the city of Kiryat Shmona. Hezbollah claimed responsibility for the attack and said that it was in retaliation for Israel's overnight strike into southern Lebanon. This was one of the deadliest attacks since the beginning of the war. There have been daily exchanges between Lebanon and Israel since October when the war began, and the international community has been scrambling to contain the situation and make sure that it doesn't escalate. At least 11 soldiers and nine civilians on Israel's side have been killed, and 200 Hezbollah fighters and 40 civilians on the Lebanese side. Now, while this was one of the deadliest attacks, I spoke to international crisis group analyst David Wood on Wednesday. And he said that it is unlikely to escalate further, that Hezbollah has had opportunity before to intensify the situation, and they haven't, and that they fired these rockets into an area where they knew that Israeli civilians had already evacuated. Also on Wednesday, there was continued attacks in Gaza. Airstrikes killed at least four people in the southern city of Rafah, and there are believed to be about 10 people still buried beneath the rubble. As these attacks are continuing, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has remained defiant and he had a message for Hamas on Wednesday. He said that no amount of international pressure could preempt, could prompt Israel from stopping this war until Hamas made concessions. His remarks were largely seen as a way to try and smooth over the situation between Israel and the United States. Netanyahu was angry at the U.S. for not vetoing a United Nations security resolution for a ceasefire. But still on Wednesday, Netanyahu criticized the U.S. and said that its lack of veto had encouraged Hamas to think that international pressure could make Israel stop the war before it completed its war aims. Relationships between the U.S. and Israel have become frosty in recent weeks, and largely because of Netanyahu's adamant to launch this ground offensive into the southern city of Rafah, where he says that the last Hamas groups are still operating. Netanyahu undermined the U.S. concerns on Wednesday, saying that the nearly one and a half million people there could just move. He said they could pick up their tents and just go north. But it's unclear where they're supposed to go. Much of Gaza has been reduced to rubble, and the humanitarian situation has become catastrophic. I spoke to a nurse with the International Committee of the Red Cross. He's operating in one of the hospitals in Gaza. He said the hospitals are overflowing with patients as well as displaced people. There's not enough food. There's not enough water. The little water that there is, 90% of it is unusable, and there is a big concern for the outbreak of disease such as scabies and cholera. Sam Mednick with the Associated Press for CGTN in Jerusalem.